When Qatar won the right to host this World Cup, it made a promise. We will make sure that this is a milestone in the history of the Middle East and a milestone for FIFA. But questions remain about this tiny Gulf state being the host. Questions about human rights, the environment, and how FIFA reached this moment. Qatar! That choice was made by FIFA's executive committee. But even before the vote, there were issues. Two members were suspended over allegations they'd offered to sell their votes. Since the decision, a whistleblower has alleged three members were offered cash for votes by Qatar. And US prosecutors have alleged that two more FIFA officials were offered and received bribe payments to vote for Qatar. The FIFA officials involved and Qatar have always denied the allegations. And a FIFA inquiry concluded votes weren't sold, but it also found potentially problematic conduct of specific individuals as part of Qatar's bid. What we can be sure of is that most of the committee that took this decision have since been accused, banned or indicted over allegations of corruption or wrongdoing. And once the decision was made, vast construction projects began. Transport, hotels and stadiums. Seven new ones were built. Hundreds of thousands of foreign workers, mostly from South Asia, were hired. And there have long been concerns about their treatment. Workers were exposed to a whole range of different forms of exploitation, including having their passports confiscated, living in squalid accommodation, and in some cases it amounted to forced labour. Qatar, though, has told the BBC it's improved conditions. The work that has been done uh, by the government in terms of labour reform, what the World Cup did was it accelerated that initiative. It was a catalyst for that change. There have been reforms. Human Rights Watch calls them significant, but it also highlights ongoing wage abuse and exorbitant recruitment fees. There are also widely shared claims that thousands of workers died building this World Cup. That's not supported by available evidence, though establishing the number of deaths is hard. Qatar says there have been three work-related deaths on World Cup sites. The UN's International Labour Organization says that is an underestimate. It also says there were 50 work-related deaths in 2020 in Qatar as a whole, and that most of them were migrant construction workers. But the ILO acknowledges the limits to this data. It's called on Qatar to improve how it records deaths, in particular related to heat stroke. There's also the environmental impact of this World Cup. The Qatar World Cup has set a real example in sustainability and what can be achieved. I've never seen anything like this before. Certainly we've never seen a World Cup with a carbon footprint like this before. Those stadiums, hotels, a new metro system, a million people flying in, it all comes at a cost. This is FIFA's emissions estimate for the last World Cup in Russia. Its estimate for Qatar is higher. But one UK university says it's likely to be much higher than that. Despite this, Qatar is making this claim. Examples of the work we are doing include organising a fully carbon neutral World Cup. That's based on offsetting emissions. And this leading climate scientist isn't convinced. The idea that they've somehow made it green by cheap, nasty so-called offsets that just don't undo the damage from the emissions at all, uh, you know, to become carbon neutral, that just, uh, that doesn't stack up at all. There's one more issue too, LGBT rights. This is the message to fans. We welcome everybody, but also we expect and we want people to respect our culture. And there's concern about what that means, because homosexuality is illegal in Qatar. This month, the Qatari World Cup ambassador described homosexuality as damage in the mind. According to Human Rights Watch, this year, LGBT people have been arrested and beaten. And as we consider all of these concerns, let's remember where the last World Cup was. Russia, after Vladimir Putin had already annexed Crimea from Ukraine. Big sports events often come with political and cultural tensions and compromises. As well as that, as the former FIFA boss Sepp Blatter said about the decision to choose Qatar, of course, it was also about money. And that's something Qatar has a lot of. This is how much was spent on each World Cup since 1990. This is what Qatar has spent. And after that kind of investment, 
This is FIFA's message. Everything is ready and everyone is welcome. In a letter to team, Gianni Infantino has written, we know football does not live in a vacuum, but he urged, please, let's now focus on the football. It's now for fans and players to decide to what extent they're willing to do so.